Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Finally, a little flower. The flower has a pattern. It has the Gabrielle pattern, bottle pattern on it. Because we are going to do, finally, as requested by you, Gabrielle Essence. The Essence of Gabrielle unboxing. Now, this is a 50 ml. I usually, with the new releases, I veer towards the biggest bottles, not just because the ratio of um, dollar per milliliter is much better, but also because um, I tend to buy immediately the biggest bottle available of the new releases because you never know if they reformulate things, and if they do, it's always good to have the first batch, the first production series or whatever you want to call it, or the first few batches that went into production before any possible alterations happen. However, in this case, I purchased the 50 ml because, as we all know, you could check out my review of the first Gabrielle, uh, the Eau de Parfum, um, not really my cup of tea. But anyway, Chanel was super sweet. They gave me, again, a lot of freebies and nice things. Let's get to those as well. I got this big box. Let's blow everything away. Let's get to these goodies before we get to the perfume. We got an, the eye wants its uh, part in the game as well, doesn't it? I love this. This is the, my favorite freebie to date. This has a sticker. I have to peel it off. Chanel makeup. Um, oh, oh, inside there's stuff too. <laughs> Great. Oh, okay. Um, one point, what is one point five ml Gabrielle Essence sample and a miniature. Liquid matte, matte liquid lip color. Let's see how this one looks like in the color 152. Chocant, I guess shocking. Oh, super cute. Miniature lipstick. Well, thank you for that, Chanel. But, so, okay. But this I really love. It's, uh, some... Um, Velvet, black velvet, and inside is black cotton with a golden zipper. Gold hardware with black velvet. This is one of those freebies that I really enjoy. Most of the time you get some weird little tiny pouches out of weird materials, but this is like a nice Chanel type of material I really like. So thank you so much, Chanel. I will be using this one a lot. Super cute. Chanel makeup pouch. Love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, what else did we get? Mm-hmm. Let me take all this stuff out. Jeez, it's a lot. Ah, here's also a test paper. Okay, and let me put the bag aside. Ah, okay, let's see. Sublimage. Ultimate skin regeneration. God knows I need it right now after the summer. My skin is a mess after the summer. I need to regenerate from all the heat. That was not good for me. Ultimate Regeneration Eye Cream. Loving their eye cream. This one I really use a lot, actually. And then this, Intensive Restoring Treatment. It's on a little sticklet. It's basically an oil on a stick. It's super funny. When you take the lid off, it's like oil. already. It's a stick dabbed into oil. You just got to use it immediately. So I'm not going to open this one right now. And then I have one testing paper. which doesn't smell anymore after a couple of days, it's evaporated. Finally, here we are. Now I'm wondering if the lights are a bit too strong. Let's just turn them down for a bit, okay. Clean the Chanel tissue paper and off we go on this journey. On the unboxing journey of Chanel Gabrielle Essence. <laughs> the way I pronounce it in French. Jeez Louise. Okay. So as I said, 50 ml instead of 100 ml. They still have their... Well, by now they're not anymore that new. Uh, but uh, the cardboard protection that is in their new fragrances always resembles or copies the shape of the bottle and then you open it up and there it is laying in its paper prison clap 
2019 is the launch of Gabrielle Essence. And 2017, two years ago, was the launch of Gabrielle. This is the 100 ml bottle, as you can see the difference obviously between the two. What else we can see between, as difference between the two is that, well first of all, I used up almost half the bottle. So I did experiment with it quite a bit. I did um, wear it. I tried it in cold, hot, humid, dry weather, all sorts of weathers. And the Eau de Parfum is an okay perfume. It's just not that Chanel to me. But you can check out in detail first impressions and review of this one also on my YouTube channel. I will also post a link to those videos in the description box underneath this video, but also at the end of this video probably in the card section, whatever they want to call it now. Now, what we notice is difference between the two is the color of the liquid and the color of the sticker. The camera does not really show extremely well that this sticker is more yellowy gold and this one is a more pale gold. So they have changed the hue of the gold sticker, but also the liquid itself. On the essence, it's darker, more gold and ambery than it is on the Eau de Parfum here. It's a bit more light. And even though this one is two years old, so after two years, the liquid might have gotten a bit darker, it's still lighter than this one. And it's lighter than this one, despite this being a 100 ml bottle, meaning that the amount of liquid, it's, it's just a thicker amount of liquid. So if we look through it, this one is still lighter than this one. Anyway, I have to admit another reason why I was... Uh, interested or why I decided to get the 50 ml rather than the 100 ml was because of the word essence. I kind of like the idea of having my essences or pure perfumes or higher concentrations in smaller bottles. It just, I don't know, feels more elegant to me. I prefer it that way. Um, maybe it gives me just a mental illusion that a perfume is more concentrated that way, that it's more intense that way than having it in huge bottles. But that that could be just um, my own mental kind of uh, a mistake of thought, perhaps. But it just, to me, um, works better that way somehow. Go figure. So, but anyway, let's spray it on. Let's put this one to the side for now. Let's open it up. Let me also see how this one looks. They look the same. I would say, again, this gold hardware for the bottle is a lighter gold than this one. This one is more champagne bubbly than this one. Are the stoppers the same? No. One is bigger than the other, and you can see very well now that this gold is a darker hue than that one. Okay, let's spray it. Put it here. Now you see the liquid on the arm, on the wrist. Mm -hmm. So as I was purchasing it in the boutique, they are emphasizing, in the Chanel boutique, they're emphasizing quite a bit the concept of this um, concentration having 10% more tuberose uh, concentrate in it, or absolute, whatever it is, tuberose essence if you want. I'm a big tuberose fan. Do I smell it out in here? Well, this one does smell greener. A little bit greener to me. Oh, it's stuck in one of my hairs. There you go. <laughs> uh, it does smell greener than uh, the Gabrielle before. Let's read the ingredients quickly before we move on to the actual smell. So, um, we got peach in the opening notes. We got red fruits, we got black currant, we got tigran, and we got citruses, mid notes, orange blossom, ilang ilang, jasmine, tuberose, white flowers, and we got coconut. The base notes being vanilla, musk, and sandalwood. Now, the, the white flower context is something that is missing in the description of the fragrance in its Eau de Parfum form, but um, they're still there. Uh, they're still there, definitely. 
I'm smelling it now. It's a very light texture. It's very hmm, simple, you could say. By the way, the batch code of this one is a four is it's four two zero one. The batch codes are usually etched at the bottom of the bottles. This is really hard to see, but it's right there. It's four two zero one. And the batch code has to match the batch code on the box as well. Four two zero one, which is there. Cabriolo de Parfum has a batch code 1702. So we went up three in the three hundreds, even though it's only two even even though only two years have passed. Oh my god, I can't talk anymore. So even though only two years have passed, you can imagine how big the production of perfumes was that they usually um usually we we skip the thousands in a year. So I was talking hundreds, but I meant thousands. So once, so from one thousand, it should have been three thousand now, but it's already we're already up to four thousand. So they're they have probably expected to sell these quite a bit, and they probably produced a lot of them, which also doesn't speak in its favor in terms of being a mass product. How can the ingredients be so special if they're so mass produced? If they're special, they should be rare to find. So that already rings a sort of an alarm bell, uh, but. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt for now. Let me smell it again. It's definitely Gabrielle and it's still quite similar to the Eau de Parfum. I'm going to spray the Eau de Parfum on this wrist. There you go. There we have the Eau de Parfum. I gave it a three quick spritzes. This one is lighter in its texture, but it's also lighter in its general, overall, its entrance on the hand. Um, it's more aldehyde-y, if you want. And screechy. <laughs> this one has a bit more of a metallic, bitey, citrusy note in the opening. This one has less. It's as if this one cuts quicker to the heart notes. This one is a bit fresher in the opening notes, but that freshness isn't necessarily that good. It's, um, I remember whenever I would use this one and I stopped using it quite a while ago, but whenever I would use it, it would, um, it would turn interestingly appealing in the dry down, but you would have to wait until it got there. While this one, is more pleasant, more from the get-go. Mm -hmm. They have tweaked it. I mean, we can't say, you know, some of you have been writing me in terms of, um, for example, Dior Sauvage, uh, the pure perfume, telling me that um, you've spoken to sales associates telling them that it's the same. The Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum and the Pure Parfum are the same. I still have to really go and test it, so I will be also probably making a video on Sauvage, uh, an updated video on that, but um, here I can tell you they are different. It's not that Chanel is tricking us and, you know, just kind of try, trying to resell us the same perfume, colored a bit darker, you know, even the price isn't that much higher. It's almost the same price for both of them, but They are trying to to change it. This one, by changing it, I mean, I think they really understood that people were complaining about it. And I mean, if you check out online um, websites that carry text, written form, reviews of the fragrance, there are a lot of people disliking it, the, the first release. And a lot of people are skeptic about the second release, um, you know, stating that it's just probably going to disappoint as much as the first one. Now, it's not as disappointing as the first one. Mind you, I repeat, I'm not disappointed with the first one. It's an okay perfume. I just always mention and I repeat it and I'll never stress enough to repeat it. It's just not a good enough Chanel perfume. That, that's all. And, um, hmm, hmm. The, the new one is, for now, after a couple of minutes of talking about it, it's, I can already tell you, I can also classify it really 
being less of a Chanel fragrance at the height of Chanel quality and more of a comfortable, pleasant perfume to use every day, no matter if it's day or night, uh, if it's hot or cold outside. Um, it's okay. It just doesn't really... And this is what surprises me, um, that after an Eau de Parfum, they would come out with an essence, but they wouldn't call it Parfum. I don't get it. This is also an Eau de Parfum. In fact, if you check on their little sample here, it, it, it says essence, but then at the bottom, I wonder if I can show this well. Here it says Eau de Parfum. So again, we have an Eau de Parfum, but it's an essence. So what is it? An essence or an Eau de Parfum? Or is it the essence of the Eau de Parfum? So why not? My question is, why didn't Chanel just step it up immediately? And why didn't it go from an Eau de Parfum to a pure Parfum? I don't understand what the semi step up means. It's as if, it's as if they are aware of all the critiques coming their way with this one. But somehow they didn't want to admit that it's bad. Or, I mean, it's not bad. Again, I repeat. They just didn't want to admit that it didn't sell as well as they wanted it to. And so it's not like... But they're aware of it. So it's not like they up it from an... They, they keep the other parfum as is. And then they put a pure parfum on the market. To further develop the Gabriel range. No, what they do instead is they keep the other parfum. They bring out an updated version of the Eau de Parfum. They call it Essence because they just don't want to admit that this is... like what, what I'm trying to say here, at the end of the day, is they just should have discontinued this one. <laughs> they should have just said, okay, guys, we have an updated formula of the Eau de Parfum. So, this one is gone. Here is the new Eau de Parfum of Gabriel. That's what they should have said. Instead of having now an Eau de Parfum and having another Eau de Parfum and calling this one Essence of the Eau de Parfum. You know, it just, it really, it makes no sense. It's, I, I think it's a quite a weak marketing move because they're too similar. They're almost the same thing, but not quite. Okay, so the promotion of the 10% more tuberose we have here, fine, maybe because it was missing here already. So if you've perfectioned this formula or you're making me perfect. We're not really near perfection here, you guys. It's it's a mass release product that Chanel is hoping is going to appeal to the masses. There's not much character here. It's, sorry, that's just what it is. It's just a trial to revamp the whole range of Chanel fragrances by launching a new perfume after so many years, which was this one, and then hoping that uh, it's going to be a huge success. Well, it wasn't. But anyway, if you're going to tweak the formula. I mean, you're doing it anyway. All perfume houses do it anyway. They don't even mention the fact that they're, which is terrible, but they don't even mention the fact that they're reformulating fragrances. So they would just keep calling it the same name. I mean, Dior just like re, 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 re released Hypnotic Poison in a new bottle shape and everybody's complaining that it smells different yet again. Dimashi, what are you doing? This is kind of a similar situation. I mean, I'm just saying if the sales aren't the best as you wanted them to be or for whatever reason, you're bringing out a further concentration of Gabriel. Don't make it so similar. You know, just, I guess, discontinue one and leave this one. Or, or you really go for something different. Or really experiment with the facets of Gabriel and bring out an eau de toilette. Bring out a pure perfume. Like, play with it more. This, again, was not as daring because it's a mass release product that was meant to appeal to the masses and make it making it super simple and easy and acceptable and lovable without any complications whatsoever. So lack of character. And then, so you've already shown us that you're, you're capable of, of these low punches. Well then, why again? You know, why not step it up? I mean, if you already released the easy one, then go for something complicated. I'm not saying co that complicating things per se is a good thing. <sighs> Most of the times it's not, but I'm saying give it character. You've already done this one. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna make the effort, if you're gonna invest all that money in launching a new concentration of the fragrance, then step it up. You know, just really, really go for it. Don't just do things halfway. I have the feeling this is like halfway done. Sometimes the camera overheats, and when it does, I take the opportunity actually to let the perfume develop on my skin. Here we have the essence, and here we have the eau de parfum.
And I have to say, um, I let this, I made a relatively long pause of about 20 minutes. Um, a very interesting development, I have to say, in the game. The Eau de Parfum uh, has something in its character which I can only now really identify, now that I have it um, with its counterpart, the Essence, and that is a certain metallic, dusty quality to it. What does this mean? Um, whenever I smell it on my skin, it's a... Uh, it's like a green, metallic, poisony touch. Which is something that annoyed me when I first purchased the Gabriel uh, two years ago. Actually, I didn't purchase this one. This one was a gift, I think. Yeah, this was a gift. <laughs> but, doesn't matter. This one has a opposite quality in the dry down. What does that mean? No dusty metallic notes. It's warm. More fluid, if you may, more soft. It is more Chanel than this one. Now, having said that, I'm realizing how much actually the difference that the Eau de Parfum has from a regular Chanel release being that it has that metallic -y, powdery quality to it is an interesting characteristic to the Eau de Parfum. It still doesn't make it a Chanel, but I kind of can appreciate it more now that this one is released because I can understand and, and I can understand, actually, I, the positive side is I can understand um, the slight nuances where perhaps Olivier Polch, I don't know if this was intended or not intended, or if it was a side effect of the combination of all these ingredients. I don't know if Olivier Polch wanted, through this slight nuance, to kind of bring in some new zest into Chanel perfumery. I don't know, but it's lacking here. But it's here. And... It's a it's a dry it's a dry metallic -y, powdery tone. This one is way more Chanel. It's as if they found a way to Chanelify Gabrielle. And in the dry down, this one does come to the Chanel storyboard. It's in the in, it's in the Chanel world and sphere now. Sorry, I'm making these um, breaks because I'm I'm smelling it as I as I talk, so you don't see me do that, obviously. But I'm doing it. Trust you, me. It's happening. <laughs> and uh, there's a bit of coconut, and I know that the coconut is listed anyway in the ingredients. I'm looking again to see if they listed the coconut also in the ingredients of the. No. It's the coconut. Okay, the coconut isn't listed officially in the Eau de Parfum, but the coconut gives this one a lotiony, milky touch that I really like. I have to say I'm enjoying it. And it's totally missing here. This one re remains metallic-y, and this one isn't at all. So... <sighs> Hard to say. I mean, they're different enough to warrant at least testing them out side by side. Mind you, this is very important with these two. Don't be fooled into thinking that you can, um, for example, you have the memory of how this one smells. So you know you didn't like, let's say, for the sake of argument, you know, you remember that you didn't like this one. So you're not going to retry it. You have a memory of how this one smelled two years ago, right? And now, you, now this one comes along and you spray it on for the first time and you think right off the bat, you're probably going to think, it happened to me too, oh yeah, this is Gabriel, oh, it's the same one. But only after I really uh, sprayed this one on one wrist 
this one on the other wrist, only then did I really realize the difference between the two. And the difference happens the more that they the longer they stay on skin. The longer you give them time to develop on your skin, and the more you will notice the actual difference between the two. And I think a fair comparison in this case is only given if you really do apply both, not on top of each other, but I mean, you could apply on top of each other later on in the game if you really like both, then you have both in your collection, like I have both now. You could at some point experiment and try layering them, first one then the other, or first the new one and then on top of that this one later on, I don't know. But that's all later on in the game. We're just at the beginning phases of trying to get to know this one and trying to understand what are the immediate differences we can sniff out between the two. It's like this one has just been born and now we're trying to realize where it's heading to, what its life is going to be, you know, what are its friends going to be. Is it going to have any friends? We don't know. But it's strange. It's like a new era for Chanel. I mean, I'm not. let's not talk really big terms here. I'm not saying like the beginning of a new era. I'm just saying it's as if this one closed the chapter of the tens, the Chanel tens way of experimenting with Olivier Polge. And this one inaugurates the 2020s. This one inaugurates the 20s. It's a warmer approach to perfumery, I have the feeling. Um, there's something cyborgy about this one. And in general, we could talk about the 10s now. Something about the tens in general, um, something something about the tens is tense. Ha! Huh? It, um, you know, I don't like to get into politics and uh, world economy and blah, blah, blah. But perfumes oftentimes resemble and reflect the times we live in. And the tens were a messy decade. And as we're coming to a close of that decade, um, something new will inevitably begin. And we as humans attribute uh, big power to numbers and to decades. And the fact that one decade, you know, you have the fashion of the 80s, of the 90s, of the noughties, uh, you know, the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 20s. So same applies to perfumery. And I have the feeling as if this one is looking towards the future more than this one. This one was like the last chapter of the 10s for Chanel, some of the chapters that were written in the book of Chanel Perfumery in the 10s were not as good. Others were really great. Um, this was one of those not so good examples, but nevertheless, it tried somehow. I, it, it, it tried too hard to run after the times. And this is a problem that Chanel faced quite often in the 10s. Uh, in perfumery, you know, when... Um, Jacques left and Olivier, his son, came to be the head of the Chanel perfumes or the head nose of the Chanel perfumes. I mean, that's one of the big changes that happened in the 10s, but uh, also the type of perfumes released and the whole 10s, already the noughties were like that, but the 10s in particular were very heavy on flankers. Very, very heavy on flankers. And... Um, not all of them very successful. And it seems to me as if Gabrielle, the eau de parfum, was, even though it was a new release, it ended up being the flanker um, of, of its decade. <laughs> it's, let, let's say that Gabrielle is the flanker of the tens, and Gabrielle Essence is trying to detach itself from the flanker aspect of things and say, let's begin the 20s, let's begin this new decade with a fresher approach to the concept of creating a new perfume for Chanel. So let's just say, yeah, okay, we did make, we did do the Eau de Parfum and uh, it didn't really work out as we planned. So let's try to detach it from all the chains that it was burdened, burdened with in terms of it trying to appeal to the fashions or the tendencies of the tens. And let's give it a new outfit. Let's dress it up for the 20s. So yes, it is a flanker. 
I mean, we're calling it a different concentration of Gabriel. We're not calling it a flanker because it's not a different, it doesn't have a different name. But still, it's as if, again, as I mentioned before, Chanel is not wanting to admit the mistakes of this one and is just like kind of giving us the new one and saying, yeah, it's an addition. But let's see. Let's just see if this one will be phased out and discontinued with time. And as always, only time will tell. But I don't mind, uh, after all is said and done, I don't mind the essence. Smelling it again. Smelling the parfum. This one remains more crystalline and sharp and fresh throughout the whole dry down. This one is more warm, balsamy and milky. The coconut is definitely something I'm liking in it. Here we also have the orris root, which is not mentioned there. And we also have the pear, which is not mentioned here. I guess they swapped the the pear for the coconut. Wow, what a huge change. Groundbreaking, Chanel. Thank you for doing that. Um, no, but all puns and jokes aside, it's okay. I mean, a lot of you have been asking me for my opinion. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying, oh, you must get it. It's something every nose should try. I'm also not saying don't get it because it's really bad. It's not. They're both okay. Um... They're both okay with my mood today and with my, I don't know, my whole mindset of today. I would say I prefer the new one. I, I prefer the essence to the Eau de Parfum. But maybe, you know, there will come a day where I want that dusty, metallic-y, acidy, citrusy feel that this one delivers. And this is what kind of annoyed me, I think, with the first release. It's exactly that acidity that this one brings with itself, which I also smell in this metallic tone. It's like almost a metallic, dusty tone that is going towards an acidic rust. It sounds worse than it actually... I'm trying to describe a smell here. It's not easy, but uh, it's a citrusy type of metallic tone. It has an acidity to it that is not always very pleasant. This one... lost it. it this one lost that acidity and that's why i'm liking it more but i'm not saying that that is more or less chanel you know of the two maybe this one is more chanel because it does um give me the impression for now to stay closer to the skin uh to have that sort of intimate space that a lot of really well blended chanel fragrances have if you really know chanel perfumes you can realize pretty soon that um all of the higher concentrations, you know, the pure perfumes, they stay close to the skin and they are really so beautiful. And you kind of want to smell yourself all the time and you dig your nose into your wrist or wherever you, you place the perfume because it's just that good. This one is going there. I'm really curious to see whether or not Chanel decides one day to release the pure perfume of Gabriel. Would that be interesting? I definitely think it would. They're heading in the right direction. I just wish they would have immediately released the pure perfume instead of doing this double stepping up. As I said, to finish this off, they should have just admitted, okay, guys, maybe this wasn't the best thing. But you know how Chanel is, they never admit anything. They're never wrong. Everything is always perfect. So, okay, whatever. But they should have just said, hey, guys, what do you think about this one? Now, let's see, do you, are you liking it? That would have been way more honest as an approach and I think much more cool towards all of the clients. Also, because it's an education. You educate each other. The clients give you feedback. You give them feedback back. You know, Chanel doesn't usually tend to give feedback back. They just listen secretly to what you're saying and then they might change stuff around or not but they're not going to admit to anything and so i don't know it, same issue we had with the lazo you know they, they were supposed to be concentrated as other colognes and they are the colognes but then marketing team decided last minute to call them auto toilets just to be able to i guess make them cost more i don't know you know stuff like that is shady i'm not a fan of decisions like that in this case i'm having my doubts why such a slight change, but, you know, no name change, just add essence to it, and you're like, yeah. But okay, we've had the same issue with uh, Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum Intense. It's kind of like the essence as well situation. 
Um, and it also, in that case, it worked better. It was less metallic and the Intense, Coco Marozel Intense is a perfume I really enjoy quite a bit. So there you have it. Um, do I regret not purchasing 100ml after testing this one for the first time a bit more in depth? Yes and no. You know, yes, always because it's always worth more. You get more for your buck when you purchase a bigger bottle. But then again, you know, I have so many perfumes that I love and enjoy so much more than this one. Uh, and that I use really on a regular basis, that this one will just not get enough love and use from me. I know this already. So the 50 ml at the end of the day did save me uh, 30, 40 bucks uh, because I didn't purchase the bigger one. But I'll probably, I mean, let's see, I'll keep you updated. You know, I might end up finishing this bottle completely and then purchasing, if I do, okay, fine. Then I can purchase the 100 ml after that. But for now, I will be testing it out for sure. I will be giving it goes, you know, when as as autumn kicks in, colder weather, it's always colder weather and Chanel fragrances go hand in hand because colder weather generally triggers, unlocks certain facets of especially the higher concentrations of Chanel fragrances and triggers a certain warmth in them that is just so divine and delicious. It's so sophisticated and marvelous and you just want to live surrounded by them and live enveloped inside of those Chanel cocoons forever. A lot of those facets are not triggered in summertime when it's too hot outside because it kind of, it's as if the heat literally burns off uh, even the chance for, for those nuances to, to, to even get a chance to develop. So I'm really looking forward to experimenting with this one more. Cometh autumn and winter. And you can also check out my Coromandel unboxing and review. This is a really good example of a pure perfume uh, release gone very well. Uh, it's I'm really loving it more and more. It's just so divine, and the fact that you dose it through the stopper with the droplets, it's just mm, delicious. So they do they do good by us, and they do good by their perfumes, and they are trying here. I see this as a shy trying to better what they already did. But as I said again, as this one comes out, I kind of appreciate more the facets of this one because I realize what is different in this one to this one and this type of formulation or formulating and composing perfumes will probably never happen again within Chanel. So let's enjoy that as an experiment on its own. It's already worth the test. One important aspect to mention about the two, um, and this particular review is like going back and forth in time also. The way it's edited is also between the past and the future. <laughs> Meaning, um, I'm really in the dry down, dry down now. And the way that the, these two perfumes are developing is, oddly enough, because of the essence being long enough on my skin, on this arm, and the Eau de Parfum being on this wrist, I'm managing to appreciate this one more thanks to this one. This one has that warmth and it's easier to love in a way. And this one has that cold, more sophisticated touch to it. So yes, strangely enough, even though conceptually, um, this one is maybe, none of the two is really a, a great Chanel, it's, they're both good, really good perfumes, but they're not really great Chanel perfumes. But this one is maybe more conceptually a Chanel perfume than this one. But because I'm now smelling this one next to this one, this one is more sophisticated. This one is maybe more Chanel in terms of going towards number 19 type of coolness. And this one is more a modern version of Chanel going towards a warmer... Mm, I don't want to compare it to another Chanel perfume. I don't know. Maybe it could be... Uh, it's not even close to number 22, but it has certain warmth, certain nuances of warmth that number 22 has. Uh, so this one is kind of more bougie in a way, if you want. The Eau de Parfum. But only after having smelled this facet of it. And that's something to also take into consideration. Not really sure if this one is better than this one. It's just different. Different enough to warrant a, a new release for all the wrong or right reasons. But thanks to this one, I'm kind of um, more appreciative of that one. If that makes any sense. 
it, it, it is more elegant. It's because it's less warm. It's more cool. And I think that metallic dusty touch to it is what makes it more elegant than this one. If that's what you're going for, stick with Yodo Parfum. Otherwise, go for more warmer shores, especially in the cold months ahead of us. But only the future will tell what Chanel will bring new to us. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you like this unboxing, first impressions and review of Chanel Gabrielle Essence Eau de Parfum. All these pronunciations. Thumb up this video if you liked it. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Super Deco Ball spelled together. I'm also on Patreon where you get to see an exclusive pre-releases of videos all ad-free as well as videos that only come to Patreon as well as photos and other news. Also, be sure to check out my new series where you get to call in and talk to me in the studio called Ask Jacob, also available now on my YouTube channel. Love you all. Never forget to never give up on love. See you soon. Take care. Bye.